The first speaker has a job that allows her to develop innovative services that help users receive, control, as well as manage information. Here to tell us more about, an I, about what it is to be an IoT engineer is Sindiswa Mafilika. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Cindy Samafilika. I'm an Internet of Things engineer. Yes, I know I look 12. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So, I come from a company called Mafikin Digital Innovation Hub. It is a techno hub where we cultivate and unearth innovative solutions. We create new jobs, future skills, and efficiency and effectiveness. So, these are some of our services. Enterprise development, we have an incubation program for technopreneurs, aspiring technopreneurs, and people with existing businesses that want to transition into the fourth industrial revolution for efficiency. So we assist them from uh, the, just the idea to running a very sustainable business, developing prototypes and all that. And then we have our future skills development program. So that is where we are exposing people to these new technologies, to these new programs, like your artificial intelligence, like your data analytics. So what we do is that we add weight to existing qualifications. So if someone studied something, like let's say stats in varsity, and they want to upskill so they can be relevant in the market, what we do is that we give them a six-month skills program so that they can add weight, giving them leverage so that they can compete with other people that want jobs. We also have our grassroots programs. So with our grassroots programs, what happens is that we are bridging the digital skills gap. We all understand that we come from a very, very rural country, right? So what we do is that we expose people to new technologies with our digital transformation program, and then our creative and design thinking program because we want people to not see the box. We are normally told to think out, us, us, outside of the box. So what we do with this program is that we expose people to not seeing the box at all, which means there are no limits to their thinking. We also have our digital literacy, because there are people in our country that don't know how to use cell phones. So we expose them to such technologies, so that before we can expect them, to be programming and doing these insane things that they have the basics of everything. So in doing all that, we came up with the Future Makers program because we saw a lot of gaps in, the, in, in our programs, in our services, because we were expecting people to be coders, people to just be engineers, people to be doing these amazing things without the foundation. So that is when we went back to the drawing board and started with our Future Makers program. First, we started with exhibitions, where we showcase various technologies, your virtual reality, augmented reality, 3D printing, and other technologies to young people, not only just showing them, then they get excited, but what we do is we believe in allowing kids to break stuff. So we let you play with the components, we let you experiment, we let you do whatever you want to do. So what happens during the Future Makers Hackathon is that it's a hacking marathon. You are not hacking systems, you are hacking problems. We give you categories, we give you themes, you identify problems in those themes, let's say agriculture, and then you come up with a solution to that problem with your team. And then the most interesting part is that we expect you to build a prototype. So you don't just come and stand like I'm standing now with a presentation, but you have to show us something that actually works. Yeah, so you're exposed to creative and design thinking, business, so you can turn your solution into a sustainable business, and various technologies in the fourth industrial revolution. Now, Internet of Things. So the IoT is an umbrella that refers to billions of things that are connected to the Internet, collecting and exchanging data among each other as devices and systems over the Internet with the help of sensors. So now we are talking about what we call some sort of data engineering. I normally say that IoT is the core of data engineering because with these sensors, we engineer data. So to design, you know, we all know the metaverse. To design the metaverse, we need a lot of data. 
So we use these sensors to get data to create the metaverse, which is a virtual world, which is a replica of the world that we live in. So it improves efficiency. You can imagine that you don't have to work as hard. I believe that if you were told to, set, to go give your aunt a letter like two hours away, you're going you're gonna to fight. So to make your lives easier, that's why technology was introduced. So we have five types of IoT, which is your consumer IoT. So consumer IoT is like your smart watches that gets your temperature, that gets your, your pulse and all that, and like your smart home security systems and all that. And then we have commercial IoT. This is smart, so, smart stores, smart hotels, smart buildings. So you get into your office, your office already knows you. It knows that Cindy likes her temperature at 32 degrees. So the moment you walk in, the temperature is at 32 degrees. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about commercial IoT. And then industrial IoT, that's manufacturing made easy. So you don't have to work hard. You can just control whatever from your cell phone, from your tablet, from whatever device. It makes manufacturing easier, making things more efficient. And then we have what we call infrastructure IoT. So with infrastructure IoT, we are talking about your car communicating with traffic lights, cars communicating with other cars, other vehicles, trains, planes, cameras, everything is communicating. So that is a safe world. That is a very safe world because now there is what we eliminated, what we call the human error. So now that even if you fall asleep while driving, hence the self-driving cars, even if you fall asleep while driving, you won't cause an accident. I'm not saying fall asleep while driving, but yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we have the Internet of Military Things, which was designed to preserve, to preserve people's lives. Normally, when we, when we hear people say, I'm going to be a soldier, you're scared for your life, you're hurt, you're hugging them like you're seeing them for the last time, because we know how dangerous that is. So these technologies were designed to preserve their lives. So now, as you can see here, you can identify your enemy or your friend. Because if you're in a crossfire, I don't think you'd be looking to see, um, is that you? You're going to be shooting to save yourself. So to avoid things like that, such technologies were developed so that we can preserve people's lives. So a day in the life of an IoT developer or IoT engineer is basically centered around a lot of research. So not just thinking you know it all, but trends change all the time. So from time to time, you have to learn something, you have to collaborate with other people, you have to come up with insane technologies. And for me, in the incubation program, in an innovation hub, it is mostly centered around coming up, assisting our innovators and our inventors with coming up with sustainable solutions that actually make sense, narrowing down their ideas, adding technologies to their existing ideas. And that's a lot of research, because I have to balance out understanding science, understanding engineering, understanding every aspect, so that I can assist them with their innovations. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Now I want to do a quick recap with everybody. Let's see if you guys were paying attention. We heard her mention this multiple times. What does IOT stand for? Put your hand up. Okay. I like this side of the room. I want to ask this side of the room because you guys are like the, you guys are like the naughty kids in the corner. What does... Hmm, we need to ask them a complicated question. Ask them something. A harder <laughs> one. Okay, what is the, what did I say is the core of data engineering? Hmm. IOT. Okay, and what exactly are we using? They're close, but what are we using to engineer the data? Sensors. Lovely, she got it right.
Okay, okay. Now, one more question I'm going to ask you guys, and then you guys are going to have an opportunity to ask her questions. Is that a deal? Yes. Okay. She mentioned that there's commercial IoT. We now know that IoT is Internet of Things, right? And she even had a picture. So this is for everybody that has, uh, what's it called, visual memory? Can you give me an example of commercial Internet of Things? This one wants critical thinking. Th that's okay. consumer IoT. Close. <laughs> uh, I can't hear you. So, it is it is found in facilities like hospitals. He's right. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna let one more person give me an example, an example of commercial IoT. Robots. Mm. TV. TV? Not oh, really. No. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys out. Okay. So have you ever seen in the movies where maybe somebody's sleeping and then they go and the lights go off? Have you guys ever seen that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did did I did the clue help? I heard somebody say your name. Mm, sort of, it's incorporated. It's a temperature sensor. Okay. Room temperature something. I'll ask you, okay, I'll give you another example. I'm, I get home and I say, Alexa, please turn on the TV. Smart home system. Yes! Okay, so looking at the room, it seems like, what grade are you guys in? Ooh, what grade three. are you guys in? Uh, oh, but I give a great Okay, okay, let's calm down. Hi, Luna. Luna. I'm gonna now open up the floor to ask Cindy some questions, because I can now tell that you guys learned something, okay? So please put your hand up. We're only gonna take three questions. Put your hand up and the microphone will come to you. We have a question over there. Do you have another question anywhere on this side? Please tell us, sorry, please tell us your name. Um, and what school you come from, and then you can ask your question. And stand up, stand up so everyone can see you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Loazi Ntlapo. I come from Semitra Maria. Uh, What's your question, Loazi? Can I ask, how can cars control itself? That's a good question. Give, him, give it up for him. That was a good question. Okay, Loazi. Um, there's what we call, there is what we call programming, Loazi, which is actually speaking to a machine in a language that it understands. So as much as I'm speaking English to you right now, um, machines understand different languages like your Python, your C, your C++. So, to get cars to drive themselves or to be autonomous, we program them, we give them instructions, we put sensors in them so they know how to act. Yeah. Okay. We have got our second question. What is your name, madam? Ooh, we can't. And I come from the school named Santa Maria Junior School. My question for you is, how did you become a huge engineer? Okay, good question. Thank you so much. Um, well, I used to watch what we call lab rats, Dexter's lab. I'd, yeah. <laughs> so I'd get so excited seeing all the different technologies. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that. And then I was exposed to a world that I learned that I actually could. 
So I started studying hard. I, I'm Microsoft certified, I'm a Microsoft certified IoT developer. So I started with that. I got a full stack development programming course that's, uh, that I also did. So that's how I got where I am. And lots of stress and practice. <laughs> okay, let's take our final question over here. Please stand up, tell us your name, what school you come from. Um, my name is Stephen Fanya and I come from Ikezetzing Secondary High School. And there's my deputy principal, Miss Zignani. Hi, deputy Hi. principal. Hi. <laughs> uh, firstly, I'd like to answer that, that little boy who asked already, Golo Edisabeth, as one controlling themselves. You it's, wanted to answer him? Yes, then I'm going No, but we are asking Cindy questions. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Miss Cindy. So basically, your company you work for is for investing in people who have dreams to evaluate the, the, the human society. Okay, so we normally say that we work with the crazy people. So if you had an idea and people looked at you like you're crazy or they actually told you that you're crazy, then you're our guy. We call ourselves the home of innovators, people with innovative, insane ideas that people don't understand. We have a guy that actually developed a generator that does not use fuel. Yep. It's a renewable energy generator. It doesn't even make noise. So we work with people that create insane things like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Please give it up for Cindy Siwe again. Thank you.